It is a nice environment, and first of all, thanks uh, for the opportunity to chat about the reinsurance industry. But uh, there's a lot of things I think uh, I would call them tailwinds at the moment in the market. Uh, I represent the life and health part of the business. Interest rates are very good for us because you know we carry reserves over the long term for our policyholders. But alongside that, of course, we have had a tough period of COVID claims. We paid out more than $3 billion uh, to people in need during COVID. Uh, but the effect of COVID, of course, now is starting to decline. Uh, so that's a, a very strong positive tailwind for us. And I think on the outlook, we have a lot of disruption coming to the way the industry calculates its numbers. So the way you construct reporting accounts will change under IFRS 17. That creates a lot of opportunity for reinsurers to help companies deal with that disruption. Um, let me just um, close the book on the COVID claim story. But your industry, some people say, behaved despicably. Other people say it was just looking at the, the, the letter of the law in terms of how it interpreted claims as well. Yeah. Have, have we finished now with all the litigation and the back and forth about what the industry should have done, what the industry did uh, and how it reacted? Uh, there's still some ongoing litigation in that space. So I, I, I represent the life and health side of the business. And for us, it's, it's very straightforward. Okay. Uh, so there's, there's no litigation really there at all. And you know, we, we contributed more than $3 billion towards helping people deal with the effects of the pandemic. Okay, Do you want to just um, tell us a bit about IFRS 17 and what the ramifications are of that? Yeah, so it will change the way that companies report their earnings, as well as the construction of the balance sheet. And everything will look quite different. For us at Swiss Re, actually, for life and health, it will be a a positive change and we'll be talking to our investors more about that later this year um, but for some companies it might not be so positive the, the key thing is it creates all this disruption and what reinsurance can do is it provides a very effective mechanism for giving uh, capital relief to companies to optimize their balance sheet so as your balance sheet transforms through IFRS 17 you have this powerful tool there that enables you to fix some of the problems or to optimize some of the outcomes in, under IFRS 17. So it could be lumpy from here when it comes to some of the numbers? I think it will be lumpy for a number of years. I think there's, uh, there's a huge operational change for companies to cope with and get used to the new set of numbers. And then there'll be a phase of, OK, now we've seen our numbers. What can we do with them and how can we optimise them? That will be the opportunity space for reinsurance. That's interesting because it's been a sweet spot for insurers of late. Premiums have gone up. We've seen uh, the investment returns also rise thanks to this market. You just touched on those returns a moment sure. ago. What's the thinking? Because they may not last forever. We've got rates high now at this point and higher for longer seems to be the story from central banks, but they may not be there for a long time. So as you look about protecting the, the long term assets and having money to pay out for some of these longer claims, are you just trying to load up as much as you can on some of these debt instruments to try and get returns maximised in this window? Uh, no, the, I, the primary goal is to make sure that we charge an appropriate premium on the property and casualty side. And as, as we all know, natural catastrophe, the frequency of them is increasing over time and, you, you know, the world is changing rapidly. Actually, on the life and health side, which I represent, we actually saw a contraction in global premiums over the COVID period. It's a face-to-face -face business. It's very difficult to, to maintain the same volumes as we could pre-COVID. What we anticipate this year is we start to see a bit of recovery again, and I think this is another tailwind that's a positive for our business. We'll see about a 1% plus uh, in real terms growth rate in premiums this year around the world. Um, it varies a bit by economy. It's actually a bit flattish in advanced economies, but the Asian markets we expect will come through with very strong growth. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersacci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.